Hi everybody, I'm Brendan, and today you and I will be taking a tour of BrainSpring's digital library. Let's get started. Now, you can access our library in a couple of ways. You can simply log in using your web browser, or you can access it through our app on a mobile device. Links to each of these options can be found on the BrainSpring Digital Library Tour and FAQ page. Since I'm using an iPad, I'll be doing this demonstration on the iOS version of the app. But keep in mind, the functions of the library are generally the same no matter which option you choose. All right, let's open a book. So just for the sake of demonstration, I'll hit phonics first here. And you can see when you hit the course, it shows you all the books that come with it. So let's pick one, the Curriculum Guide Volume 1, why not? Um, so you hit that, and then there's a little download button. I'll hit that as well. Now, one of the few differences between the app and the web version of the library is that you need to download books the first time you access them in the app. If we were using the web version of the library, we wouldn't have to download anything here. So it looks like it downloaded super quick. Then I'll just tap outside the box, and then I'll hit the book again, and now it's open. So you can turn the page, and that's actually really cool. That looks awesome. Um, <laughs> Another way you can turn the page is if you hit the screen, there's a little tile button that pops up, and you can actually just drag these pages along. And this is a bit faster, and if you wanna go really fast, say you wanna jump 50 or 100 pages forward, uh, you can use the slider, and that actually just whips by, which is kinda convenient. And then you can slide it and say, layer one plus, boom. Another thing you can do, again, if you just hit the screen, the toolbar will pop up. You can hit this button on the lower left and it'll open up contents. And then everything in the book is just here. There are arrows that you can click and it'll expand its view. So I can choose anything in layer two. Let's just choose lesson two, one, why not? And again, you can turn the pages, which looks awesome. And one more thing, you can actually, rotate your tablet and it'll put it in one page view and there you go one cool feature we should check out is the bookmarks feature so let's go into the app as you can see on the top of each page at the top right hand side there's a gray bookmark ribbon so if we want to bookmark something we'll just hit it and you can see that we have the chance to actually create our own title so let's call this today's lesson. And I'll just hit enter and now the ribbon has turned blue. It's an active bookmark and that means that we can reference it later. So let's say a week has gone by. I'm just going to tap on the screen here. Let's say we're over here somewhere and I'm thinking I kind of want to go back and reference that bookmark that I made. I'll just tap on the screen, hit the bottom left icon for the contents and I'll hit the bookmarks tab in the middle of that. And there I can see it right there. Today's lesson, I can hit that and it takes me right back there. So that's super handy. Another cool feature is the ability to search for certain words inside the books. So let's do that. Let's say I'm thinking of the lesson where we practice ending blends and I wanna find where that is. I can simply tap the screen and tap the magnifying glass icon down here on the toolbar and then type in practice ending lens and I'll hit enter. And it looks like we got two results. So I'll click on the first one and it takes me to the table of contents. So that's not exactly what I want. So I'll hit the search bar again, hit enter. And let's click on the second one here. This takes me right to the lesson where we practice ending blends. Now, if I wanted to then navigate beyond this page, I have to hit the X to the left of the search bar so that I have control over the page again. But then from here, I can practice some ending blends. My favorite feature is up next, and that's the pen tool. And you can make handwritten notes with the pen tool. So to use the pen tool, what I usually do is I actually zoom in first and you can just pinch and expand. So I'll just do that here, pinch and expand. Then I have a better view of what I'm looking at here. So to make a note, a handwritten note with the pen tool, you'll tap the screen 
you'll hit this little fountain pen icon at the bottom of the toolbar. Let's pick a color first. Let's go with purple. I'm in a purple mood today. And then once you have your color selected, you know, you can circle stuff, you can underline stuff. If you want to erase things, you can easily just hit the undo button. It's that arrow pointing to the left. You can also erase things by hitting this eraser button right there. And all you have to do is just tap on the areas that you've written and it'll erase the entire stroke. Now to get out of the eraser, you can just tap it again and then you're drawing again. So again, I'm just hitting that with the eraser button, tapping that. Now, let's say you have a bunch of marks on your page. All right, so I'm just gonna circle all this stuff. You know, I wanted to underline this, I wanted to underline that, and I don't need it anymore. Well, what do I do? Well, there's this handy sweep button at the very bottom right here, and when I press that, alert, all the data on this page will be cleared. I'm gonna hit yes to continue, it's all clear. I'm gonna hit X, and then I can zoom out. Now I have a clear page. So my runner up for my favorite function has to be the highlight function, missed by this close. But let's make a highlight. So let's say I'm on a page and I wanna highlight something. What do I do? So I'll just go over here and let's say I wanna highlight students scoop the mm after they write each word. I'll just click on students and hold it for a second. And then with these handles, I'll click and drag and expand my selection to that sentence because that's what I want to highlight. Now, let's pick a fun color because we love fun around here. I'm going to pick green. Okay, so now I'm just going to click out of that and boom, there's a highlight. And if I go to the next page and come back, it's still there. It didn't go anywhere. Let's say, though, that, I don't know, a week has gone by maybe two weeks, and I want to reference that highlight again. How do I get back? It's super easy. You just click on the center of the screen, your toolbar will pop up. I'm gonna hit this little person with a marker icon, and there it is right there, highlights. So I can click on that, and it takes me right back to where I made the highlight. It's super nice. But let's say those two weeks have gone by. I can't remember why I made this highlight. Well, there's a really cool function with that as well. When you make the highlight, you can actually add a note that goes along with it. Now, since I've already made this one, I'm just gonna click on it and hold it for a second, and it will come up with the handles again, just like when we were creating the highlight. There is an icon that has a T and three lines. I'm gonna click on that, and as you can see, now I'm making a note. So I'll just type in, have the student try this again. And I'm just gonna hit this floppy disk icon at the bottom to save it. Zoom out a little bit. And you can see right here, there's that icon. That's our note right there. So two weeks have gone by. I'm all the way over here. I wanna get back to that highlight. Click the screen, click the person with the marker. And as you can see, it doesn't appear in the Highlights tab anymore. It appears in the Notes tab because we put a note with it. So I'm gonna hit the Notes, and then I can select my highlight. Here I am. Why did I make this highlight? I can just click that icon, and it shows me. Have the student try this again. Oh yeah, that's right. Then I do that. Now I don't need the highlight anymore. I can just delete it by pressing the trash can at the top right. Delete note, yes. Now our page is clear, and we're good to go. In addition to making a note on a highlight, we can also add dedicated sticky notes. So to add a note, I'm gonna hit the center of the screen and then I'm gonna hit this sticky note icon. So now I can just go in and I can enter a note. Revisit this next week. And just like the note with the highlight, I'm gonna hit the floppy disk icon at the bottom right and it saves my note. And here it is right here on the side of the screen. I'm gonna tap it and hold it, and then I can move it around, I can move it anywhere. Now, you can also color your sticky notes with different colors. So to do that, I'm gonna hit this. Let's click blue. We haven't had fun with blue yet, so I'll click blue. And then I'll save it with the floppy disk icon, and now it's blue. 
click it and hold it for a second, and then I can move it anywhere on the page. So that's really cool. And again, just like the highlight, I can revisit this from anywhere in the book by tapping the screen, hitting the little person with the marker, and it'll appear in the notes. I can click on that, and then click on the note, and it will tell me to revisit this next week. Now I remember. And finally, to get rid of it, just like with the highlights, you can hit the trash can on the top right. Delete note, yes. And we're good to go. My next top feature of this app is the sounds. Yeah, we have sounds built into the app. And we can hear what they sound like by searching for them. So let's say I'm wondering, what does R sound like? I can actually just tap on the screen, go to our magnifying glass to open up our search, and to search for the sound, I'm gonna hit backslash, R, backslash, and then hit enter. And I'll just hit the top result here that popped up. And it brings me to lesson 115, R. Now, to regain navigation of the page, again, I'm simply going to X out our search there, and then I can zoom in. And then we have this box, play sound R. So let's learn what R sounds like. I'm gonna hit it. That's pretty cool. Now we know what R sounds like. Now, let's say you wanted another way to access the sounds. Let's say I'm not on this page. Again, I'm just gonna tap the screen, but this time I'm gonna hit the contents icon at the bottom left where we had our table of contents and our bookmarks before. But this time I'm gonna hit resources on the far right and it has sounds. Now, we only have one sound here because this is a pre-release version of the app, but by the time it's out, we'll have all the sounds in here. But for the time being, we have R. So let's click on this. Oh. As you can see, it took us right to the page and it immediately played the sound, which is pretty cool. Next up is the printing functionality. There are gonna be times when you need to print out a worksheet for your student. And we can do that directly from the app. Now, some pages won't have a printer icon, and that's because they're not worksheets that you can print. So we'll scroll over, oh, here we go, we have one. So you can see that there are printer icons on each page next to the bookmark ribbon. So we'll hit that, and then you can see you'll just print as you normally would on a computer. Now let's look at how to get home. So to return to your bookshelf, I'm just gonna hit the screen, and then at the very top left, we have a home icon. So I'll hit that, and then here we are at the bookshelf, and now I can access all the other books. And then to get back home again, I'm just gonna tap, hit the home icon at the top left, and here I am back at the bookshelf. So that about wraps it up. Pretty cool, right? I think so. And those are just a few of the improvements that BrainSpring is making to help enhance lesson planning and set your students up for success. So I want to thank you for joining me, and I really hope you enjoy the BrainSpring Library app.